Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Well, it, managing fusarium is 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 a challenge. A challenge. Uh, it it really. Uh, you're not looking at uh, a silver bullet to a, to completely address the risk from the from this particular disease, and and really what you need to look at, and if you, you look at experience from colleagues in North Dakota and Minnesota, and and uh, in areas where fusarium head blight has been a, a real issue for a longer period of time, it really involves an integrated approach to managing it. Uh, none of the tools that we have access to provide a, a high level of control. Uh, however, if you combine several management strategies, you can achieve a, a, a reasonable level of management, reducing the amount of disease, maintaining yield, and reducing the amount of uh, mycotoxin contamination. So in terms of fusarium head blight, probably um, uh, the foundation in terms of managing it would be a, a good crop rotation. So uh, probably looking at at least two years between cereal crops, avoiding uh, small grain cereals after corn because corn can also be a host and small grain cereals can also act as a host for corn so avoiding those two crops in rotation especially uh, back to back so at least two years between cereal crops so two years of a non-host whether it's canola or or peas or beans or, or some other crop that isn't uh, a, a host of, of uh, fusarium head blight. So crop rotation to start with. Uh, the second option is to look at variety choice. So you're wanting, with, with uh, variety choice, you're wanting to uh, choose a variety that has a fit in, in, in terms of your production system, uh, what markets you're looking at, and a variety that has the best level of resistance possible. And certainly uh, the breeding programs uh, have been very active in this area. So we're seeing some, pretty significant improvements in terms of the level of resistance going from maybe 10-15 years ago not really having much resistance maybe reduced susceptibility to having varieties now that have probably at least a fair if not a good rating uh, in the provincial variety guide so those two strategies uh, certainly combined uh, the next would be to look at um, a fungicide application uh, on its own, fungicide application uh, may provide suppression at best, but if you bundle that in with a good rotation, uh, a reasonable variety, and targeted, target, targeted fungicide application for fusarium head blight, you're going to achieve a, a pretty high level of management. So you reduce the amount of downgrading due to fusarium damage kernels. You'll, de you'll also um, maintain yield and of course reduce the, the uh, level of mycotoxin contamination of harvested grain. Uh, now those recommendations are really uh, uh, for areas where fusarium head blight and specifically fusarium graminearum is, is established on crop residue. It's, a, it's a, uh, a normal organism that you find. So if we look at southern Alberta, certainly under irrigation, uh, that unfortunately we're starting to see more and more of a, a problem with graminearum. One aspect of southern Alberta that I think is unique that might actually act in uh, the producer's favor is uh, the option of integrating with rotation, variety choice, and fungicide, the uh, option of irrigation management. So the key time for infection in cereals, things like uh, wheat especially, is right around flowering. So just after the head has emerged from the crop. So if you can limit the amount of irrigation if possible, and it'll depend on soil texture and, and how much rain you're getting from mother nature, but you can manipulate the, the environment within that crop. So you make it less conducive, less humid. Um, you certainly want to avoid uh, pumping the water to the crop and using excess amounts of irrigation because that just basically creates conditions that favor disease. Now if you're a producer in other areas of Alberta where if you look at some of the most recent provincial surveys of crop residue or grain, you look at some of the work that we've been involved with uh, uh, in the mid 2000s and even in the mid 90s we started looking at trying to determine where we were at with regard to fusarium and especially fusarium graminearum 
It's either not found or very infrequently found in, uh, in central Alberta, northern Alberta, and the Peace. So in those regions, uh, the pathogen typically isn't present. So producers would want to be cautious about introducing the pathogen uh, inadvertently. And, and the main probably risk there is via infected seed. So being cautious about seed source, testing it, and um, trying to use seed with non-detectable levels of Fusarium graminearum. That will certainly help to cut the risk of introducing it. In terms of other, if we go back to southern Alberta or Saskatchewan or Manitoba, uh, one of the other issues that you'll often find, as we're talking about seed now, um, so if you have a high level of seed infection, producers can find that they'll have issues with seed germination, seedling growth, and stand establishment. So making sure that you use a, uh, a seed treatment that has Fusarium graminearum on its label, using it at full rate, and using a good application technology for that seed treatment uh, will help to minimize any issues that you have with stand establishment uh, early in the season. So that's certainly, so those, uh, I guess in a nutshell, are some of the key strategies to try and manage Fusarium head blight in small grain cereals.